than a wicked and hip hop. Bad, bad, and a wicked and Today's lecture is going to be about tree indexes, specifically uh, B plus trees, which we'll get to in a moment. Um, just really quickly, uh, I just want to remind everyone about some upcoming deadlines. Uh, project number one is going to be due uh, this coming Sunday, September 26th, as usual at 11.59 p.m. And homework number two uh, will be due Sunday, October 3rd at 11.59 p.m. So uh, those are the deadlines, and now let's let's jump straight into the uh, material. So um, last class we kind of talked about hash tables and how uh, data structures could be leveraged in all these different ways in um, our DBMS. So again, you know, you could use it to uh, for in internal metadata storage. You could use it for core data storage uh, at the level of a table. Uh, you can use uh, a hash table as, as a temporary data structure, and we also mentioned that it could be used um, as a table index. Uh, but specifically, what we're going to focus on today is table indexes, um, and we're going to discuss why um, you may not want to use a hash table for that purpose and an alternative data structure called the B plus tree uh, that is, is um, more widely used uh, for that use case. So uh, just so we're all on the same page, a, a table index um, refers to basically a replica uh, of a subset of a table's attributes that are organized or sorted um, for efficient access uh, of those based on those attributes. So this you know, is going to allow the, the DBMS to quickly uh, find data um, that we're looking for. For example, if it's a primary key, we can, we can quickly uh, track down the data that we're looking for. Uh, whereas the alternative, if we didn't have a, a table index, would be to perform uh, a sequential scan of the whole table. So we'd have to read the whole table, all the pages, uh, to find all of the, the tuples that we're looking for. Um, if you have something like a, an OLTP or a transactional workload, uh, you almost always will need some form of table index because, uh, as we kind of discussed in previous lectures, those types of workloads rely um, on, on low latency access. So you need to be able to get to the data items that you want very quickly in order to read or update them. Um, so you, you need some kind of uh, index to, to uh, get that latency, otherwise you're stuck again kind of performing a full scan. And the, 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 with the table index, the DBMS is going to be responsible uh, for ensuring that the contents of the table um, and the contents of the index match, so they have to be logically synchronized. We can't have you know, updates, insertions, deletions uh, applied to just one and not the other because then you know if we go and look up something in our index, um, that's been removed from the table, we haven't yet removed it from the index, then you know, it's going to point it to some garbage value. If it's the other way around and we go to look something up uh, in the index that's been only inserted in the table, but the index hasn't yet been updated to reflect that, um, the index is going to tell you it's not there. So kind of the, the DBMS needs to uh, keep track of uh, keeping the, the contents um, of these synchronized, and we'll talk about that uh, in later lectures when we when we focus on transactional uh, properties. So uh, during runtime, um, it's the DBMS's job to figure out kind of the best index or indexes to use uh, to execute each query. So picking kind of the, the process of, of picking these uh, correct indexes uh, is part of what's called query optimization. Again, we're going to talk about that in later um, lectures, but, but the, the key idea is that uh, there are potentially a bunch of different ways uh, to execute a particular query, so the DBMS is going to have to, uh, to pick you know, the, the best or fastest way uh, to do that. Um, and in terms of, of building indexes, there's this trade-off that we have to keep in the back of our mind uh, regarding the number of indexes that we're going to create per database or per table. Um, obviously, the trade-off is that we get faster lookups. You know, if we if we 
have indexes built, then we can use them uh, to, to speed up our queries. But on the other side of things, you know, we have to pay uh, in terms of storage overhead. So um, we, uh, we have to store some extra data, um, metadata, the, the data structure itself, uh, in order to uh, build the index. And then we also have to pay overhead in terms of maintenance. So this process of keeping um, the index up to date and synchronized with the data that's, that's stored uh, in, in the base tables. So kind of just, just in the back of our mind, we're always trying to balance these two things, um, kind of the, the speeding up our queries as well as these overheads that we need to consider. So just a, a high level overview of today's agenda. Uh, first, we're going to talk um, at, at a high level, what is a B plus tree? Uh, then we're going to dive down into how we can actually use them in, in a DBMS. Some of the different design choices that we need to consider. Um, when, when building the actual data structure, when we're designing the data structure. And finally, uh, just a few optimizations that um, we can apply to, to uh, improve our, our B plus tree implementation. Uh, these aren't going to be you know, all of the possible optimizations. There are a lot out there, but uh, just, just a few examples. Um, so the, the B plus tree um, is by far the, the most commonly used uh, type of index for um, uh, a, a DBMS. So th the first thing that we kind of have to talk about is this confusing naming scheme. Um, there, there is a, a class of data structures or family of data structures called B trees, uh, and there's also a specific data structure that is called the B tree. So um, specifically in this course, we're going to talk about the B plus tree, but uh, people, you know, broadly use them. The, the term B tree to refer to uh, any of these different um, balanced tree data structures. So uh, the the B link tree, for example, uh, which I think came out of CMU, um, kind of has uh, some ideas uh, where where uh, leaf nodes have these uh, pointers uh, that, that link between them, which we'll we'll see in a few slides. But uh, kind of the 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 modern B plus tree um, borrows ideas from all these others. So it borrows ideas from the B link tree, borrows ideas from um, these others. So we're going to be in this class uh, specifically referring to B plus tree and I will try um, not to, to slip up and, and use the, the B tree term because uh, specifically we're going to be talking about B plus trees. Uh, if you're wondering um, what the B in B tree or B plus tree stands for, um, I, I couldn't tell you, uh, so am I. Uh, the, the authors of the paper never uh, explicitly stated um, what the B stands for. Uh, people have, you know, speculated over the years that maybe it stands for balanced, uh, broad, bushy. Uh, one of the authors' name was Bayer. Uh, so it could be, you know, his name, or they, they also worked uh, at, um, but yes, it was Boeing Research Lab. So uh, the, the B could have been, you know, any one of those. Um, I, I uh, unfortunately can't give you a definitive answer on it. So uh, the, as I said, the B tree is, or B plus tree, already starting. Uh, the B plus tree is the most widely used data structure uh, for indexing in, in uh, DBMSs. Pretty much when you call create index in almost every DBMS, uh, you're, you're going to get a, a B plus tree or something very close to it um, in the, the behind the scenes. So uh, again, just to, to summarize, the B plus tree is a self-balancing tree data structure that's going to keep, uh, keep the data sorted. So it's going to allow us to perform uh, searches over the sorted data. Uh, it's going to allow us to perform, you know, lower bound or upper bound searches. We can find ranges um, in the tree, which we, we weren't able to find in uh, the, the hash uh, tables that we discussed. Um, and we can also perform insertions, deletions, and all of this in uh, log n time complexity. So uh, you can think of it just, you know, as, as a generalization of a binary search tree um, with, with multiple uh, child nodes. So whereas a binary search tree has just two, um, you can have uh, more than two children in a B plus tree. And specifically, it's, it's going to be 
uh, optimized for systems that read and write large blocks of data. So we've been talking a lot about uh, accessing data at the level of disk pages, um, and that that is going to be a, the the uh, particular use case that this data structure excels at. Um, so there, there's no uh, original B plus tree paper. Uh, most people cite this. Uh, it's a survey paper from 1979. And it mentions that there's this uh, IBM technical report uh, that, that actually described a B tree, uh, B plus tree in 1973, I think it was. Uh, but I can't find it, uh, and no one that I know can find it, so it's kind of lost to history, I guess. Um, so kind of a, this, is the, this is the paper that, that everyone uh, references when they're, when they're talking about the B plus tree. And even though you know, this data structure we've seen is like most of the original publications are from the 1970s, as I said, it's still um, widely used today. So uh, kind of the, the properties, the, the uh, theoretical or formal properties that we care about with the B plus tree, um, it's an M way search tree uh, where M is the, the number of branches emanating out from a node. Uh, sometimes this is also referred to as the uh, degree uh, or the branching factor or the order uh, of the tree. So this is the number of uh, uh, branches or, or child uh, pointers coming out of a node. Um, the properties, again, that we care about are that it's perfectly balanced so that every leaf node uh, is at the same depth in the tree. Um, every node other than the root node is at least half full. And every inner node with k keys has k plus one non-null children. So if we have k, k keys in a node, there's going to be one extra child, and we'll, we'll see why in a second. So uh, here's a, a visual example of a uh, B plus tree with some integers inserted into it. Uh, it it's has a degree or order of four uh, because it has you know, four um, child pointers emanating out of the, the root node. Um, these uh, down, uh, nodes along the bottom we refer to as leaf nodes. And this node up here is an inner node, since the, the tree only has uh, you know, two layers. It's the, the only inner node is also uh, the root node in this case. So uh, we're also going to have at the leaf node uh, layer, we're going to have these sibling pointers um, that essentially turn the leaf nodes into uh, a linked list or a doubly linked list. So we can um, traverse along uh, the leaf nodes in the tree, and we'll see why uh, or, or ways that, that that can benefit us later. Um, and the way that the, the uh, keys are stored in the nodes are as this kind of uh, a pair, so this, this really uh, thin um, double line is a, a node pointer, so that refers to a child node, uh, and the key is stored uh, next to it. So as I said, there's, if there's going to be three keys, there are going to be four um, uh, child pointers. So you can think about kind of these uh, keys that are stored in the uh, inner nodes as being kind of the dividing point um, between each of the, the uh, child nodes. So for example, uh, if we look at this tree, we see that you know all of the, the value or keys stored in the child node uh, to the left of the, the first key five are going to be less than five. Uh, all of the keys stored between uh, five and nine are going to be greater than, greater than or equal to five and less than nine. And all of the keys stored to the right of nine uh, are going to be greater than or equal to nine. So uh, at the, the child node, uh, or sorry, the leap nodes, uh, we're storing the actual uh, keys along with their values. So we'll talk about exactly how the values are stored later, but in the inner nodes and the root node, uh, we're going to store uh, keys and node pointers. Uh, at the leaf nodes, we're going to store um, keys along with their associated values. So are there any questions kind of at a high level about this uh, right now? And then we'll we'll go through some of the the lower level details uh, in a minute. Yes. Uh, so the question is, there's nothing really on the the right of things, just always to the left. 
Um, yes, so the, the, the space to the right is used uh, for inserts, and then as you fill up, you may need to uh, split notes. But yeah, so everything, everything gets inserted and is sort of uh, left aligned. Yes. So every B plus tree node uh, is comprised of an array of key value pairs. Uh, so the, the keys are somehow derived from the attributes that the index is based on. So that could be like a primary key, it could be a combination of multiple keys. We'll see an example of that in a second. But kind of the, the keys are, are based on whatever attribute you're indexing. Uh, and the values are going to differ uh, based on whether the node is classified as an inner node or um, a leaf node. So again, the, the inner nodes are going to store uh, child pointers and the leaf nodes are going to store uh, the actual values or references to those values. Um, and the arrays inside each node are usually kept in, in some kind of sorted order for the keys, so you can um, search them quickly using binary search or something. Uh, we'll talk more about different search uh, patterns or search algorithms for within nodes later, but um, there's, there's no rule that says you have to uh, maintain sorted order inside one of these nodes. Um, it just depends on what your later search algorithm is going to be. So the, uh, the leaf nodes specifically, uh, if we zoom in on what that looks like, um, you know, conceptually we've been sort of visualizing it in the previous slides this way. So uh, there's going to be at the beginning and at the end some pointer uh, to the previous node and a pointer to the uh, next node. And we're also storing these keys, so K1 through Kn and the, the associated values. So uh, usually these uh, pointers aren't you know, actual pointers or references to memory locations. Usually um, they are just references to the page ID uh, that represents the, the uh, next node in the tree. Um, again, having these keys and values stored here, there are different ways to do this and we'll go through some uh, options for how they're stored. Uh, one way is to, you know, as shown here, physically store the uh, value inside the node uh, contiguous with the keys. Another option is to instead replace the value with a, a pointer or a, uh, a reference like a, a record ID that tells us where to go find uh, that value associated with the key uh, somewhere else in the, the table storage or something. So uh, yet another way we can uh, physically lay this out, and this is you know, how, how uh, it, the, the storage is typically done. Uh, you store some you know, header or meta metadata at the top. Um, for example, the, the level in the tree, the number of slots that you have, uh, the previous and the next uh, pointers, and then you store uh, the sorted keys in some kind of contiguous array separately from the uh, value pointers here. And this allows you just to, to have better um, uh, sequential access when you're searching through the, the sorted keys. You don't have to worry about is this next thing a value, is this next thing a key. You can just kind of have all of the keys grouped together and then all of the values uh, grouped separately. So again, kind of these keys, if we know that uh, you know, key four is, is at that offset, then we can kind of look at the corresponding uh, position in the value pointer array um, with very little overhead. We don't have to, you know, search for that one again. So as I said, there are different ways uh, that we can store the values in the leaf nodes. Approach number one is to just store the uh, record ID, um, which is basically, you think of like a pointer to the location uh, of of the tuple that the uh, index entry that the key is referring to. Um, the other option is you can kind of store the, the full uh, tuple data right in the, the leaf node with the key. So uh, in this case, you know, the, the leaf node, there's not some kind of other data structure that, that uh, like a, you know, a, a table or something that's maintaining the data that the, the tuple actually lives in the index, um, and the problem is that this is only going to work for uh, the, the primary key index. 
So if you have a, a, a primary key and you have your, your uh, table organized in some um, order by that, uh, then you, that, that can live inside the index. But if you have a secondary index, um, you have to store the, the record ID. So you, you can't have kind of these multiple sort orders because otherwise you're uh, duplicating data and you need to keep it kind of consistent across all of these uh, places. So there are uh, various systems that do things uh, different ways. Some let you do both. Um, but the, the uh, uh, high level point to take away is, is the uh, safest thing to do is, is to kind of have this record ID pointer uh, rather than this, um, uh, it's called a clustered index in the, the second approach. So uh, kind of, I made this big deal at the beginning that, um, the, oh, sorry, there's a question, yes. Uh, so the question is, um, if the record IDs are uh, pointers to the tuples, if the tuples are on a remote machine or something, how would that work? Uh, so I, we're, we're not uh, up, up to distributed databases yet. Um, basically, so the, the way you can think about this is just kind of if you, you know, have some combination of a page and an offset in the page, um, that, that represents the tuples record ID, so you can go find it. Uh, if it's, you know, local, then all you need to do is get the page, go look up in the page directory, get the page, uh, and then you can find the offset directly inside the page. Uh, I suppose if you had some kind of distributed database, uh, you would need some kind of you know, global mapping where pages reside on different machines uh, in your distributed setting. So, you know, just based on that page ID, you could go track down where the page is, request it from a re remote machine, get it back, and then, you know, you still have the offset in the page is, is the same. Does that make sense? So uh, I made this big deal at the beginning um, that th there's a, a concrete difference between a B tree versus a B plus tree and that we're specifically talking about B plus trees. Um, in the original B tree paper, uh, the, the uh, keys and the values could be stored in all nodes in the tree. So as we saw in the previous examples, um, we just had, for the inner nodes, we just had the keys stored and then uh, pointers to, to child nodes. And then when you get to the, the leaf nodes, that's where the actual values are stored. In the original B tree, uh, you could store keys and values in any node in the tree, inner nodes, the root node, wherever. Um, so the, the, the trade-off here, it's more space efficient since each key uh, only appears in one spot in the tree. Um, but the, the the uh, difficulty is that it's harder to support concurrent access of keys. So if you have um, potentially keys and values at all these different spots in the tree, then you have to uh, now concurrently manage uh, updating um, nodes anywhere in the tree rather than just at the level of the leaf nodes. And we'll see why, uh, especially for insertions or deletions, that becomes trickier. Um, as, as we uh, uh, go a few more slides in. And the other problem, um, if you have kind of these, these uh, uh, key value pairs scattered throughout the whole tree, is that it can cause problems for your uh, access patterns. So we've also been talking a lot in the course about um, that, that particularly for disk-based systems, we prefer sequential access patterns uh, over random access patterns if you have kind of, you know, keys at various places in the tree where you need to retrieve them, um, you could end up with some random access patterns, whereas if, if the uh, keys and values are only stored at the leaf node layer, uh, then you can get a sequential scan across those uh, at the bottom. So kind of that's, that's the um, uh, main key takeaway here. The important difference is that the B plus tree is only going to store values in the leaf nodes, uh, and the inner nodes, again, the keys stored in the inner nodes 
are only used to guide the search process. So they're only used as sort of these split points where when we're um, searching for a key in the tree, we can say is the key you know, greater than or less than this, this particular uh, split point. So uh, the, the DBMS can use uh, B plus tree in a few different ways. Um, if, if the query is referencing any of the attributes um, for the indexed key. So uh, for example, if we have an index built on uh, keys A, B, and C, uh, then we can support operations that are you know, of the form A equals five and B equals three. We can support operations of the form just you know, A equals five or just B equals three. Um, and the, as I mentioned uh, earlier, the B plus tree can also um, handle other comparisons beyond just equality. So you can do greater than, greater than or equal to, less than, less than or equal to, uh, unlike a, a hash table which, which can only do um, exact match lookups. So uh, not all DBMSs are going to support uh, these types of, of selection conditions. It, it becomes kind of tricky if you have um, multiple indexes or, or uh, indexes built in different ways to figure out the best combination to use. Um, but kind of the, the, the key idea um, is that we can leverage the indexes during query, query processing time during our query optimization phase to figure out the most efficient way to uh, execute the query. So just as an example of how this uh, would look, let's say we want to find key um, a comma B. So those are the two values that we have set. And we have the keys uh, stored in our, our B plus tree here. So we can go to this uh, root node and we say, okay, is A, the first, the first piece, less than or equal to A? That's true. Is uh, B, the second piece, less than or equal to C? That's true. So we know that we only have to traverse down here uh, and, and look in this node. Uh, so this is like a kind of a full lookup for the key that we're looking for. So we get down to the, the leaf node and then we can uh, search in the leaf node for the exact key that we want to find. The, the second type of lookup we can perform, I mentioned, is uh, this kind of like a, a prefix lookup almost. So we're searching for uh, anything that kind of matches this pattern where the first key is A and the second key can be anything. We don't care. So we just want to find, you know, all, all uh, keys that match this A and then wildcard pattern. So again, we go to the uh, root node here and we say is A less than or equal to A. Yes, so we're going to traverse down this um, uh, path here to the child node. And then we kind of just need to scan forward to find all of the uh, um, keys that match this A wildcard pattern. And since we have uh, these uh, pointers that, that point between or link uh, the leaf nodes, we can just scan straight across and, and stop as soon as we find a key uh, that's larger than uh, A star. So are there any questions about this? Yes. Uh, sorry, can you repeat the question? So uh, the, the, this, this second, uh, yeah, okay. So the, the question is, um, we can also support uh, uh, a search on just B equals something. So, uh, I'm not, I'm not showing it here. Uh, the way that it would work is you would need to search in uh, all of the nodes that could possibly contain that um, value. So in this case, uh, if, if we can, I don't, I don't know if you can do it with this tree construction, but imagine a more complex tree construction where you could rule out, when you're, when you're traversing the path down, you could rule out certain sub-ranges where you know the B value can't be included. Does that make sense? So I, I, it's, it's tough to do without, a, without a, an example here, but uh, if, if 
Um, if you imagine a more complex tree with uh, multiple layers or different split points, uh, you may be able to exclude certain subranges of the tree where you know that like B value isn't between uh, two other values. Does that make sense? I uh, see so the question is if the primary construction is on A, how can you traverse down to uh, how, how can you exclude ranges for the, the secondary one? Yeah, so if, if you can get into a, a, a particular sub, so I, I don't think it's gonna work in this, this example tree here, but if you can figure out that there's no, um, there's no, there's no way that B can be included in a particular subrange because you know the min and max values for that subrange, then you can exclude it from search. Yes. I think like a good example here is that if you're doing like wildcard B, for example, once you hit the CC, you're going to look and you're going to see anything greater than that. It's not possible to have um, a B in the secondary like of that sequence. So then you can like ignore that uh, child altogether. I th so the the comment was that in the um, leaf or leaf node all the way on the right, uh, it's not possible to have a B in the second position. I don't. I think you could in this case because so imagine like you have another uh, oh, yeah. like if you have D yeah. D comma B at the end. Um, I, I think if so, I, I don't think that the, it, it works in this particular example here, but I think that if you, if you have a subrange where you know that um, there's, there's no way that you could have a B in the second position, and I, maybe we can take this offline after class, I can, I can show an example, but if you can narrow down a particular subrange where you know that there can't be a B in the second position, you can exclude it from your search. And I, I, so this is just with, with two values. I mean, you can generalize to more A, B, C. Uh, and maybe that makes it a little bit easier to think about if you know uh, that you have A comma B and then some other value, you know that you know, the B value, you, you don't have to search for something that's a C in the second position. Does that make sense? Okay, so uh, for performing an insert, um, this is kind of the, the basic algorithm. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. Um, basically, we're going to find the, the correct leaf node L that, that the key belongs in. Uh, we're going to put the data entry into L in sorted order, so that's the key and either a pointer to the value or the value itself. Uh, if L has enough space in it, then we're done. That's great. Otherwise, we need to split L uh, into to two nodes, so we can take the keys that are in L and split them. Um, some are going to go in the uh, original L node, some are going to stay there, some are going to go into this new L2 node. Um, we can redistribute the, the entries evenly between them. And then we're going to take the middle key, so the split point, and copy that up to the parent. Uh, so then we, we kind of get this uh, new split point inserted in the parent if the node grew too big. Uh, and then we're going to insert an index entry pointing um, uh, f from the, the parent down to the newly created L2. Uh, so kind of to split an inner node, we, we just redistribute the keys uh, evenly, but we again push up the middle key. So it works uh, similarly each time. Um, we want to split, for example, let's say the inner node we're splitting is the root that's going to increase uh, the, the tree height. So kind of the, the deletion is sort of the inverse of this. Uh, we're going to start at the root. We're going to find uh, the leaf L again where the entry belongs. Remove that entry from the leaf. Uh, if it's at least half full, then that's great. We're done. Um, otherwise, we need to redistribute it, uh, redistribute the, the entries somehow either by 
uh, borrowing from our sibling uh, or uh, merging um, a node and the sibling. So the, the kind of the, we need to maintain this property about the fullness of the node. Um, so then again, if the merge occurred, we go up to the parent and we have to delete the pointer uh, to the node rather than adding it as in the insertion case. And again, this can uh, merge, can propagate to the root, which will reduce the tree height. Um, it'll, it'll decrease the height by, by one layer. So one of the problems that we can run into, and we talked a little bit about this with hash tables, is dealing with uh, duplicate keys. So uh, the first approach is that uh, is really simple. We just append the record ID to the key that we're uh, indexing. So we just take the unique record ID, let's say it's the, the page number and the offset in the page, uh, and we'll just kind of stick that on the end of the key so now it's unique because you know, only, even if the key is the, the same as a, another uh, tuple, only one tuple can have that unique record ID. So we've made the key unique, and then we can put um, the, the key into the tree and we can just do this uh, uh, partial uh, partial like prefix sort to find uh, the, the uh, key that we're looking for. So the uh, other alternative is uh, kind of this, this overflow approach. So we've seen a few other cases like in the hash tables, for example, where uh, if we have duplicate keys, we can just kind of store them in this, this overflow um, bucket. Uh, this, this works similarly. I'll show you um, in a couple slides what it looks like. Um, but basically, we're just allowing nodes, the leaf nodes, to spill over into um, an overflow node that, that contains the duplicate keys that we have. Um, it, it's typically uh, um, systems will take the first approach because the second one's a little bit uh, harder to um, maintain and deal with. Um, especially, I mean, you could imagine if you have a lot of duplicates, you could have a, a leaf node grow kind of into this unbounded chain of um, overflow nodes. So uh, this is going to be the, the first approach we talked about, which is appending the record ID. So again, we have this uh, similar looking B plus tree to what we had uh, earlier, uh, less than five, less than nine, and greater than or equal to nine. And what we're actually storing here, instead of just the key one, we're storing the key plus the record ID. So it's not, not shown here, but imagine that there's the key, so one, three, six, whatever, as well as the associated record ID that uniquely identifies the, the tuple that we've added. So now if we want to insert six, again, what we're really going to be doing, there's already a, a six in there, what we're really going to be doing is inserting six plus this record ID, which is just the you know page and and the slot of the tuple. So now we've we've kind of uh, solved the problem. We're going to to figure out that it belongs in that uh, bin. We're going to split the bin because now it's too full. So we split it into these two uh, separate sub bins, and we can we can put the new. Uh, we'll update the 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 pointers move the middle key up, move seven up to the um, parent node, and now we can insert six, uh, the new six, not the, the existing six, we can insert the new six, which is the page, uh, which has the, the page slot record ID appended to it. So we can get both of these uh, uh, duplicate keys stored in the B plus tree, um, and they're still uniquely identifiable. So does, this, does anyone have any questions about this? Yes. Uh, so, sorry. So the question is, you don't have to store pointers at the leaf nodes. Yeah. Uh, you mean in this this uh, picture here? Yeah. So I I, I excluded them. Um, there there should be pointers. So there are pointers there. There should be uh, the the pointers redrawn uh, between all these. It's just. Uh, Got a little messy with the, the dagger, but there, there should be pointers between all those leaf nodes, yes. Uh, 
equal to already have the record of the three rupees. Uh, okay, I understand. So the the um, uh, the question is: Do you also need to store the value pointers in the leaf node uh, because you already have the record ID stored inside the key? I you don't have to store uh, the value pointers. Um, so that's one possible optimization you could play because you can you know find out where to get to that value just by looking at the the uh, second part of the key that we've, the, the um, composite key that we've created. Um, I guess this doesn't, uh, this doesn't necessarily help if you want to store the values embedded in the um, leaf node just for you know, ag ease of access, if you, so in a, in a clustered index. But um, yes, that's a one, one possible optimization, yes. Yes. Uh, so the the question is, do you also store the key and record ID in the the inner nodes? I I I'm not sure if you need to store the key and record ID in the inner nodes because I think um, you can get to the sub range that you need. I think you should be able to get to the subrange that you need unless uh, you fill up, then you can collide in the inner node. Yeah, uh, so if you, if you uh, fill up the inner nodes, then you can store it there as well, yes. I, I, so I think it, the, the, the question is, do the record IDs get stored in the middle nodes? I, I think the answer is yes, because imagine that you have more duplicates than fit in a, a page, yeah. Because then if it, it, it needs to split uh, based on something, otherwise you wind up with some kind of like orphaned pages somewhere, yeah. Okay, so uh, the, the other alternative I mentioned was these uh, overflow leaf nodes. So again, imagine we want to insert six here. Um, the, the node that it belongs in is full. So we're just going to create kind of this overflow buffer uh, where we're going to you know, just have a pointer that points to it um, on the end. And then uh, we're just going to, to be able to fill it up. Um, with additional values. So we just inserted, you know, three values there, six, seven, six, and they kind of just go in this overflow buffer. Um, the, the, in the example, the, the leaf nodes are no longer sorted. Um, again, this isn't technically wrong, um, but we just need to know uh, that we, we can't do binary search in the, the leaf node because kind of they're out of order now. You need to do uh, sequential search in it. Um, physically, th these get stored in, in separate nodes. So there's uh, you know, the original node there and then the overflow node or bucket. Um, logically, it just looks like one you know, really, really big uh, leaf node. Uh, and kind of it's, it's easier to leave this uh, sibling pointer on the exact neighbor so that when we uh, add in the overflow bucket or the overflow node, we don't update the pointer, um, we don't change the pointers from uh, the, the original leaf node uh, to its sibling. We just keep those pointing to the uh, original one. Okay, so uh, I mentioned clustered indexes. Basically, um, the idea is that the table is stored in the sort order specified by the primary key. So you have a primary key uh, on your table that uniquely identifies uh, the tuples in the table, and um, a, a clustered index is going to use that primary key as the, the uh, sorting key. So 
this is kind of how different ways that we can use the, the B plus tree in the DBMS. Um, and s some uh, DBMSs always use uh, a, a clustered index. Uh, if a table doesn't have a, a, an explicit primary key that you as the user have specified, then the DBMS will automatically make a, like a hidden primary key. Um, other DBMSs don't use clustered indexes at all, so they just keep the pages or the, the table stored as uh, unordered pages, and um, they, they, they don't have this kind of uh, uh, index organized table structure. So what this would look like in, uh, during query processing is uh, if, if we want to perform a search, uh, we're going to traverse the leftmost leaf page and that's going to give us uh, uh, tuples from all of the leaf pages. So if you think about kind of we have this index structure here which is going to direct our search and we have the, the data entries at the bottom and then below we refer to these uh, data records which are stored in pages. Uh, this is going to give us a, a sorted order for uh, the table. And again, if it's clustered, then our, our pages are going to be organized or sorted based on uh, the primary key. So this is going to be better than some kind of external sorting algorithm because it's already uh, sorted in the index. So kind of you can imagine the pointers, like I said, going in uh, uh, increasing order uh, across these pages. And our scan direction is going to be, we're going to be able to scan you know, sequentially across all of the values because they're already maintained uh, in sorted order. So on the other side, um, if, if we have a non-clustered index, so that means that the, the table is not sorted by whatever the key is, um, the, the primary key or maybe there's a secondary um, index, then we're going to be retrieving tuples from the index lookup in the order um, that they appear in kind of the, the uh, base page layout. And this can be very efficient because, uh, inefficient, sorry, it can be very inefficient because uh, it, it might lead to a lot of random accesses in the data. So just as an example of, of what this looks like, again, we kind of have this scan direction, so we want to perform a sequential scan from some uh, low end of the range to some high end of the range, but what the pointers actually look like are kind of these uh, random points, so the, the, the keys are in sorted order, but the pointers are in kind of all these uh, random out of order pointing to all these different pages. So we may end up uh, fetching pages multiple times in kind of this random order, and it's it's not going to be very efficient for uh, scanning the range. So kind of what, what the access pattern might look like is if we have all these different pages and we just do it uh, by, by scanning across the index like this and accessing each tuple uh, as soon as we find it in the index, we're going to have several page reads here, um, repeated page reads uh, where we you know, read pages and then you know, read other pages and then go back to the pages that we looked at earlier. So uh, kind of one way to get around this is if the DBMS, rather than accessing tuples immediately, uh, performs some kind of scan uh, to uh, accumulate all of the um, pages that we're going to need in advance, and then we can sort them based on the page ID so that we're only accessing pages once. So what that would look like here is, you know, we do the scan across the index, we get all of the pages that we're going to need, uh, you know, 101, 102, 103, 104, and then we sort them uh, in that, that order so we only have to access each page one time. We don't have to have these multiple reads jumping all around uh, the file because the, the uh, entries are out of order. So are there any questions about this part? Okay, so um, there are a, a, a wide variety of uh, design choices that we need to make when we're physically implementing the, the B plus tree. So far we've been kind of talking about them abstractly, um, but you know, we need to make decisions about what, what the size of the nodes are going to be, what our merge threshold is gonna be, all that kind of stuff. Um, there's this great book, uh, Modern B tree Techniques, 
uh, and it covers a lot of these things we'll talk about, um, plus others. If you're interested, I, I encourage you to take a look at it. Um, but kind of, we'll just go through a few of these design choices that are, um, are pretty important when when we're uh, physically implementing the the uh, B plus tree. So the first thing that we need to think about is the node size. Uh, kind of, there's uh, this this rule that the these the slower the storage device that you're using. Um, the larger the optimal node size for a B plus tree is going to be. So if you're on a, a, a traditional HDD, then the, the optimal node size should be around one, meg, one megabyte. Uh, faster things like an SSD, optimal node size is around, you know, on the order of 10 kilobytes. And if you're in memory, I can get as small as 512 bytes. So uh, kind of the, the on the, um, Slower storage devices that have uh, this this uh, uh, better sequential uh, read performance or sequential access performance, um, the larger node size maximizes uh, the sequential access. So if you you know are reading one megabyte from disk, it's a lot better than reading much smaller uh, node sizes from disk. Um, and again, the optimal sizes can also vary depending on the workload. So um, if you're performing a lot of leaf node scans, that's going to be different than um, if you're doing a lot of uh, root to leaf traversals. So kind of, we need to consider both the hardware that we're running on as well as the, um, the, the workload. So the, the second piece I mentioned was this merge threshold. So um, we talked about kind of the, the theoretical rules for when you merge nodes uh, when they're half full. Not all DBMSs do that. Sometimes uh, what they'll do is delay merge operations um, in order to reduce the amount of reorganization they need to perform. And the uh, idea is basically that, um, you know, if you're, if you're doing a bunch of insertions, deletions, maybe uh, insertions will come along later to fill up the, the uh, less than half full node that you have. So kind of uh, delaying or deferring these reorganizations um, that can be performed periodically to clean up the tree um, without having to do it on, on every insert or delete that, that uh, would normally trigger uh, this kind of merge. So variable length keys um, are another important thing we need to think about. Uh, there are many approaches. Uh, I have listed four here. Um, kind of the, the first and most obvious way uh, is just to store the pointers. So uh, the, the, the keys are just a, a pointer to the, the tuples attribute. We don't actually store the variable length key. We just store a pointer to the tuples attribute, and then we can go look up wherever that's stored in a, a page somewhere uh, to find out what the value is. Um, approach number two is kind of having variable length nodes. So imagine uh, that each node in the, the tree can have a different size. We don't have a fixed node size. Uh, they can vary depending on the, the keys that are stored in them. But you know, on the downside, this requires pretty careful memory management. Um, I, I don't know of any systems that do it this way because I think it gets pretty complicated with figuring out um, the size of individual pages. Uh, approach number three is to use padding. So um, basically, you just uh, allocate the maximum possible space. So imagine you have strings or something, and you know the maximum string is 100 characters long. Uh, even for, for uh, keys that are less than 100 characters, you always allocate 100, 100 bytes for the, the key. Uh, if you know, most of your keys are, are all about the same length, this might be okay, but if you have you know, one really long key uh, that you need to accommodate and the rest are pretty short, then um, it, it, it ends up being pretty wasteful. Uh, and the, the, the final approach is kind of this uh, key map uh, indirection approach. So uh, it basically it works similarly to the slotted pages that we talked about for the um, uh, uh, disk pages, where basically you embed an array of pointers uh, in the beginning of the node and they map to some kind of variable um, key length. Uh, they, they map to some kind of variable length key at the end and they kind of uh, 
grow grow towards each other in the middle, similar to how the the, um, the slotted pages worked. So uh, the the final piece, uh, and we've kind of touched on this a few times um, in in some of the earlier slides, but is how uh, once we're inside a node, how we actually find the keys in the node. So. Uh, Again, these are just three examples of, of ways you can go about searching for keys in the node. Uh, there are many others, but uh, these are, are pretty um, straightforward. So the, the first approach uh, is just a, a simple sequential or linear search. So you scan the node from the beginning to the end. Imagine, for example, you want to find key eight uh, in this array of keys. So what we're going to do is we're going to start at the very beginning, and it's just going to be you know, a loop. Um, going forward one, one key at a time until we get to uh, key eight and then we're, we're done. Um, as I mentioned earlier, if, if uh, the keys are not stored in sorted order inside the node, then you're kind of stuck with linear search. There's no other way um, other than to, to scan uh, linearly or sequentially through uh, the keys in the node. Yes. Uh, so the question is, um, is, does this just apply to the leaf nodes, or can you have inner nodes that also have the keys stored in uh, unsorted order? Um, I, I suppose you could also have the inner nodes stored in unsorted order, but you would need to look at every single you need to look at every single key to find out which two keys you, you belong between, right? Um, because without, without looking at all of them, you wouldn't, there could be another one you know, that further subdivides the range. So I think, uh, yes, it's possible, but I don't think it's pr practical or, or efficient because uh, you'd have to you know, look at every single key. Okay, so this is uh, linear sequential search. Uh, I'm sure everyone knows binary search. Basically, if the keys, if we know that they're stored in sorted order, we can jump to the middle key, uh, and then we can we can pivot to the left or right depending on the comparison. So in this case, eight is uh, uh, greater than the, the middle key seven. So we're going to go over here and search this subrange. Um, eight is less than nine, so we're going to you know move over, and now we found eight. So uh, you know this this maybe doesn't doesn't uh, look like a huge difference in the number of comparisons that we have to perform uh, with with a size array of size seven. So we're looking at seven keys, um, but as you scale up, if you're looking at many keys, then then the difference here can be uh, substantial. Finally, uh, the third approach um, that I'm going to mention is called uh, interpolation search. So basically. You're going to approximate uh, the location of the desired key based on the known distribution of the keys. So again, we have this array, and basically we're going to estimate the offset uh, based on the distribution. So you take the key that you're searching for um, minus the, the start key, so that's 4, times the length of uh, the array is 7, divided by the total range, and that gives us, um, uh, using integer, integer uh, division gives us uh, offset position four. So we can jump right to the uh, position in the array that, that the key eight should exist at. Now, if, if the, the distribution isn't, this, this is a linear interpolation, if the distribution isn't quite linear, then uh, you may have to perform this interpolation several times. Uh, or uh, switch to some, you know, if, if you can get close, really close to the key initially, uh, you can fall back to some other either linear or binary search um, afterwards. But basically the idea is to just use some kind of uh, interpolation to narrow down the, the search range that you're looking for. Okay, so uh, the, the final piece I want to talk about is just a few different uh, types of optimizations that we can apply um, in the B plus tree. Uh, I'm going to talk about prefix compression, deduplication, and bulk inserts. And there are, as I said, many, many more. Uh, if you're interested, um, you can either 
check out that, that book where there are plenty of papers available um, that describe all sorts of uh, optimizations of varying complexity. Um, but these, these three are pretty common and I think pretty impactful. So uh, we'll just go through a few of them quickly. So prefix compression, basically, uh, if we have sorted keys in, in the same leaf node, um, they're likely to have the same prefix. So uh, the example I have here are three words, robbed, robbing, and robot. Uh, instead of storing the entire key each time, so we have you know, these three keys stored, we can extract the common prefix that they have and store only the unique suffix for each key. There are many variations on this scheme, but basically um, this is the, the premise. We take the prefix, R-O-B, and then for each key we store the unique suffix uh, below it. So this, depending on you know, how similar the keys are, we can end up saving a lot of space uh, if there's a lot of, a lot of uh, repetition of prefix. So the uh, second optimization, deduplication, uh, basically if we have a, a non-unique index, we can end up storing multiple copies of the same uh, key in the leaf nodes. So uh, in this example, let's say we have you know, key one repeated three times, uh, we end up storing the key as well as the associated value. Uh, instead, what we can do is just store the key one time uh, and then sort of maintain a list of the tuples with that key. So similar to what we discussed uh, in, in implementing the hash tables, if there are many duplicate values, uh, we could just store the, the hash key once and then sort of a list of uh, values associated with those keys. So we could transform this um, uh, array here into something that's more compact that looks like this. So we store the key once, all of the values associated with the key, and then you know the next key. So the uh, final optimization I'm going to talk about uh, is related to actually building the index or uh, performing a bulk insert. So this means, uh, imagine you, you have kind of like an existing table or uh, some existing data that you want to build uh, an index, a new index on top of. So you're not starting from scratch. You have something, you know, a, a table that already has data in it. The fastest way to build a new B plus tree index for this existing data is to first sort the keys, so we get the keys pre-sorted, and then we build the index on top of the sorted data from the leaf nodes up. So kind of what the way we've been talking about inserting uh, into the, the tree or expanding the tree so far is by starting, you know, we always start at the root node and we work down until we um, find the, the, the leaf node that the key belongs in and then kind of we, we perform the insert from there. In this case, we're starting from the leaf nodes, so we take, we take the data, sort it, and then we can build the leaf nodes efficiently, uh, as well as uh, then subsequent uh, layers of the tree. So imagine we have these, you know, this, this pre-existing data, uh, these keys. The first step that we want to do is sort the keys, so we get them in this sorted order, and then it's, it's more efficient for us to just kind of scan along here and uh, insert them into some nodes. We, of course, build the uh, um, sibling pointers between them, and then we can build the, the upper layers based on um, these values. So kind of the, the, this, this way of uh, performing a bulk insert or a bulk load uh, allows us to be much more efficient than having to you know, check all of the logic of traversing the tree, performing uh, uh, splits on every single insert. So are there any questions about any of these uh, optimizations that we've talked Yes? So the, the question is, are there efficient ways to merge B trees? Yeah, so I'm not sure. Uh, I think that probably it uh, ends up being similar to like um, 
like a like a sort merge thing where if you have you know two uh, two just think about it at the level of the leaf nodes right so you have one uh, uh, sorted array essentially over here and you have another one over here and you can kind of look at the first element see which one's smaller uh, take that and then take from each of those in order to to uh, build up the tree does that make sense I sorry I didn't Uh, so, so the the question is for the inner layers. You end up having to rebalance or or uh, sp split or merge things anyway. So, does it end up being the same? Yeah, I, I think so. Starting from the the um, uh, leaf layer, since the data, the keys for each of the the two trees, say merging two trees for simplicity, the keys from each of those should already be in sorted order. So I think y you can uh, start at the leaf layer, fill out the uh, uh, leaves taking from each of the two trees, and then build up from there. Uh, I, th there may be, and I am sure there is somewhere in the database literature, uh, work about efficiently merging two B, tr B trees or B plus trees uh, at like the inner node part. Uh, I can try and track that down for, uh, uh, next class, um, but I I don't know of anything off the top of my head. But just um, from a you know thinking about it for a second, I think you you, you could start from certainly start from the leaf layer, and you'd ha you already have two sorted uh, you know key sets that you can pull from in order to to do the merge. But that would still require uh, building the the inner nodes on top of it. Yeah. Yes. So uh, the, the question is, does a bulk insert mean inserting a new table? Uh, a, a bulk insert means uh, a bulk insert into the B plus tree. So it's essentially, um, imagine you have some pre-existing data. It could be stored in a table. It could just, I mean, imagine you have just a, a big array of integers or something. You want to build a, a, a B plus tree on top of that pre-existing data. So. The way to do that, rather than you know starting from the the root and kind of doing inserts one at a time, because then on every single insert we have to traverse the tree, find out where the key belongs, potentially do a split uh, to 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 uh, make enough room in a new node, all that stuff. Rather than doing that, uh, since we have this pre-existing data, if you just take the data and you sort it. Then you can efficiently build the leaf leaf node layers because each leaf node you know is going to contain so many uh, values, and then build the the uh, uh, inner node layers on top of that until you get to the root. So it's it's Im imagine you have some pre-existing data, so it could be stored in a table, and you want to build an index B plus tree index on top of that pre-existing data. So it's like a like a bulk load in into uh, an index. Does that make sense? Great. Are there any other questions? Okay, so uh, just to wrap up, um, the, the B plus tree is almost always a good choice uh, for your DBMS. Uh, it is frequently used as both a uh, clustered and non-clustered secondary index in um, a, a wide variety of systems. And as I mentioned, even though it's from the 1970s, it's still uh, around and widely used today. Um, and if you, if you issue kind of a create index command in most systems, usually you will get uh, a B plus tree behind the scenes. So uh, with that, next class is going to be about index concurrency control. So if you have uh, concurrent inserts or deletes on indexes, um, how do we make sure that those are, are uh, thread safe? So um, if there are any other questions, uh, we can talk now or uh, I have office hours right after this. So I will see you next week.
YCK, talking about the St. Ives brew, one through a can or two, share with my crew is magnificent, plus it's mellow, and for the rest of the commercial, I pass the mic on to my no fellow, or mic check, bust it, the fuse all set, then grab a 40, the flim New Yorker snap his neck, St. Ives, take a sip, then wipe your lips, cue my 40's getting warm, I'm out, he got the dip, drink it, drink it, drink it, then I burp, after I slurp, ice cube, I put in much work, with the BMT and the E-Trouble, get us a St. Ives brew on the double. 